Bosnia The Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word, Jesus said, shall never pass away. And when we talk about for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, we're talking about the very words of God. We're talking about words that will never go away. We're talking about holy inspired words, which means they are from God. And God's eternal. And man has in him a soul. Man is made of a body, flesh. Man is made of a spirit, life. And God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. And the living soul is that eternalness of us right now. The spirit that we breathe belongs to God. And when a man dies, the body goes into a grave and we bend to funeral. And we have watched a body go lowered into a grave or get cremated. Or there are some cases where the bodies have never been recovered, like the Titanic. And the spirit, whether you're against God, or you are for God, you're an atheist, whatever you are, your spirit that gives you life returns back to God. And when God removes our spirit, there is death. Now I know they can do CPR, they can revive you, but that's not death. The biblical definition of death is when you have passed your soul from the earth to heaven or to hell. And the reason why you are going to die, according to the Bible, is that you are a sinner. And the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now you may die of natural causes, you may die of a loss of blood, you may die in combat, but the main general theme of our death is because we're sinners. And the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are defective. We are cursed. We are born with a disease that is terminal. You're born to die. Now that's not how it was to be in the beginning. When God made Adam, he said, Adam, you may eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. And the day that ye eat thereof, you, go, you shall die. Man was, was created as an eternal being. And at the disobedience of Adam to God by eating that fruit, and who cares what the fruit is, he ate the fruit. He became a sinner. Now, was it the fruit that made Adam a sinner? Absolutely not. It was God told him not to eat of the fruit. And the original sin of Adam is disobedience to God's word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Adam disobeyed God, and he became a sinner by his sin of disobeying the word of God. 
Thus, we are born into sin by the first Adam. You are what you are from your great, great, great grandfather, Adam. You are a sinner. All have sinned. You are the children of Adam. And the wages of sin is death. You're going to die because Adam sinned against God, made us all sinners. Now, heaven and earth will pass away. Mother Earth will blow up, burn up with a fervent heat, the Bible says. So don't try to save Mother Earth. You're not going to save Mother Earth. God's going to destroy Mother Earth because she's cursed and she's sin included with mankind. The earth is vile, is wicked. But if heaven and earth shall pass away and my word shall not pass away, there are very important words to people this day and age. The Bible says to born again Bible believing Christians, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Now the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is what we're supposed to preach. We're not to preach prosperity. We're not to preach church attendance. We're not to preach baptism. We're not to preach be good little people. We're not to preach give me your money. You want to give your money? Come to the farmer's market, buy their fruit, give them your money. But God wants your eternal soul. And the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Remember when Adam, I said, Adam did what God told him not to do. Do not eat of that fruit. Not doing what God told him to do is the original sin of Adam. Disobeying. So when a preacher comes up and preaches to you out of the King James 1611 Bible to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you are disobeying the word of God as Grandpa Adam disobeyed the word of God. Adam did what God told him not to do. And came death. You are not doing what God told you to do. That's still disobedience to the word of God. I don't have it. It's been on their truck since last week and they didn't bring it. God said, life is in Jesus. Man says, I got religion. Man says, I'm good. Man says, I'll get baptized. Man says, I got science. Whatever. Man says, anything but what God says. God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But disobedience to God and not listening to God is disobedience. Whether Adam did what God told him not to do or you do not do what God told you to do, that's disobedience. You're a sinner. Mankind does not listen to God. That's your nature. And when you do not listen to God, you are disobeying the word of God, God's mouth. And how precious is the word of God from God's mouth? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away.
the Word of God, the Bible, the King James Bible, is eternal. As in your eternal soul. And when Adam sinned against God by not listening to God, God said to Adam, pack up your suitcases, you're moving out of my presence, you're no more in the garden. That's it. I like that, I like that. Yes, you don't listen, so you get punished. Amen. And as people of 2019, when we don't listen to God, God says, don't pack your baggage, you're not taking it, and you're going for my presence. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. Today, when we don't listen to the word of God to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the ultimate cause when you die is hell. And you can be good. You can be proper. You can be religious. You can be wet from baptism. You can have a great, fine tax form of all the charities you've given to. And without listening to God to believe on Jesus, you can take all that stuff to hell with you. It won't even go with you. You will take your unclean soul to hell because you refuse to have it clean God's way, Jesus' way. You were born in sin thanks to Adam. And psychiatry today would have you blame your parents, blame your grandmother, blame the dog next door, blame, 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 blame. Well, that's what Adam did to God. God, it's your fault for giving me that woman. Eve, it's the serpent's fault. And God doesn't want man to blame. He wants man to repent and get right and confess his sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and, faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Your blame ain't going to clean you. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. And it's imposed through the scriptures and through studying the scriptures that God killed an animal, most likely a lamb, and shed the blood of the lamb that Adam and Eve may be clothed. Now that is their salvation. We do not today go out and grab a lamb, a goat, billy, anything. We don't grab any animal and slay that animal for salvation. We come to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, to be saved. We, as born-again Bible-believing Christians, we do not slay humans. God does not take the blood of animals. God does not take the blood of humans. That's religion. I bring to you a blood. And the blood that Acts 20:28 20, says is God's blood. And that God's blood flowed through the veins of a man named Jesus. Who is 100% man and 100% God. In other words, Jesus is holier, gooder, and righteous than you are. Because you're 100% man, you're no part of God. You are a sinner. And the Bible tells you, you must be born again. Because your birth from Adam makes you a sinner. You inherited your grandpa's it's sin. Grandpa Adam gave you an inheritance. He gave you sin and he gave you death. Thank you, Adam. And go into the graveyard to see what Grandpa Adam has done. Death is rampant. 
in God in creating human beings. Not evolution, God. God warned his creation of sinning and death, and the creation disobeyed. As you disobey, as you disobey God and believe on Jesus. There's no difference. And you need a bloody covering. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that life is in Jesus Christ. And God, to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Disobey God like Adam disobeyed will bring death and will bring to you hell. God said it. And the very words of God is, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall, pass, shall not pass away. The words of your priest, the words of your rabbi, the words of your pastor, the words of your instructor, the words of your textbooks will pass away, but the words of God eternal. And for eternally, it will be written that faith in Jesus is able to save your soul and nothing else. Acts 16 31 will be written for all eternity. And as we're walking the street of New Jerusalem gold and we're praising Jesus and we walk up to the Bible and we flip to the page and we find Acts 16.31 and we find, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I did that. And that's why I'm here. And when you go to hell, there is no Bible in hell. It ain't like hell, the Bible's eternal, because hell's eternal. And the very words that will be in heaven are the words that are implied in hell is you did not receive me, you did not believe on me, that's why you're not saved. John said, whosoever has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God, hell, abiding upon him. That is the words from the Bible, and those words will be found in heaven. Eternal words of God are eternal. Your, your newspaper print will not be in heaven. Your autobiography will not be in heaven. Your novels are not going to be in heaven. The great words of Plato and Socrates will not be in heaven. The great words of God the Father and his prophets and Jesus Christ and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit will be eternal. And part of those words, the wages of sin is death. Adam sinned, he got death. You sin, you're going to get death. You're going to die because you're a sinner. You are born in sin. Occupation of you sinner. 
And the Bible goes forth to say the wages of sin is death. Terminal. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, in Jesus, you may still die if the rapture doesn't happen. Belief in Jesus Christ will not solve your death, though it may, if the rapture happens in your time. But when you die in the Lamb of the, the blood of the Lamb, when you die as a saved Christian through the blood and the testimony and the merit of Jesus Christ, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. You don't go straight to hell and don't collect $200 in Christ. You go straight to Christ. You don't go through purgatory and that nonsense. And if you are unsaved and you disobey God on believing Jesus, the Bible says, and he died, and he was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. Again, eternal words. That are going to be in heaven forever. Eternal words that says, I am going to die because I'm a sinner. And yet there's a gift, and there's a love, and there's a charity, and that is Jesus Christ. And he has been given to us by God, our creator, to have eternal life. So... No one can say, God put me in hell. You put yourself in hell by rejecting God's gift, God's love, God's charity. You went to hell on your own accord because you will not believe what God said. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Adam had no longer the Garden of Eden because when God said, don't do it, he did it. God said, you're out of here. It's so plain and simple. Only Jesus saved. And I've got to warn you as a preacher. The Bible warns that there's another Jesus out there. An unbiblical Jesus. Heaven and, earth shall pass, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Those eternal words, and yet there's another Jesus out there. Now there's a Jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses. That Jesus is not God. That's what they proclaim. You ask your Jehovah Witness friends, say, Mr. Jehovah Witness, is Jesus God? And they will tell you the truth that no, he's not God. That's a false, that's another Jesus. Because the Bible, Jesus, is God. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Sound like God there? Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And there was no rebuke by Jesus. Thomas bowed down, people bowed down before Jesus and worshipped him. Peter had Cornelius bow down before him. He says, get up, I myself am a, I'm a man. John the apostle tried to bow down and worship angel, and they said, no man, get up. And when they bowed down before Jesus, he received it. Jesus is God. The Jehovah Witnesses are wrong. 
Now there's a Jesus that's Catholic. Ho ho! That Jesus you can eat. You can eat your God. You can drink the blood of your God in the Catholic Church. It's called the Mass. I mean the Mass. Excuse me. Do you know what the Bible says before the law? You know what God told Noah? You know what God told the Israelites under the law, written in Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers? Oh, you know what? I Do you know what the church council just declared in the book of Acts at Jerusalem? You are not to eat the blood of nothing, man or beast. Noah, don't you dare eat that blood. Israel, don't you dare eat that blood. Christians, do not eat that blood. Catholics, let's take the blood of Jesus. That's not scriptural. That's another Jesus. And another Jesus will get you to hell very quick. And very sincere. You may put yourself in a religious Jesus and give all to that Jesus, but that Jesus can't save you. Oh, okay. That Jesus can't do nothing for you. you got to have the biblical Jesus, born of a virgin, miracle, born of the tribe of Judah, of the tribe of Israel, of the children of Israel, who lived according to the scriptures because the gospel that I am to preach is that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Jesus of the Bible done what the Bible said he would do. Every jittle and every jot. By fact, John chapter 1 says Jesus is the Word. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is sinless. That's not us. Got to be God. And if Jesus, who is scriptural, who is God, can't violate the scriptures like Adam and man does, He's not going to tell you to eat his body and drink his blood when the scriptures say you can't. You're taking things too literal. Why don't you take literally where the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Take that literal. And you are a sinner. You have disobeyed God at any point of your time. I guarantee it. Like Adam disobeyed the Word of God, we disobeyed the Word of God. <clears throat> Thou shalt not steal. Have you ever ended up with a pen that was not yours? Have you taken a pencil? Have you found money, a penny, on this? On the sidewalk or on the street, a penny, and you did not find the owner? That's, that's stealing. You know what the Bible says that when you find something? The Bible does not say finders, keepers, losers, weepers. The Bible says go find the owner. When I grew up a little boy, we had a thing called pay, pay telephones, a phone booth. And we would stick our fingers in the coin slot, and sometimes we got a quarter or a dime. Hey, hey! That was good! The Bible says you're to go find that owner and give it back to them. You realize if you took that dime or that quarter from the payphone, you've stolen. Thou shalt not steal. You are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. Even if it's a dime, even if it's a pencil, even if, you know, your employer will never miss it. You're stealing. You are a sinner. You need the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. 
Have you ever told a lie? No, oh, come on. You just said no. You just lied. <laughs> when you say I never told a lie, you just lied. You have been completely accurate on all information of life as long as you live. Completely, 100% accurate. Other welts, you're a liar. Have you ever called out sick from your employer and you weren't sick? That's a lie. The Bible says thou shalt not bear false witness. Have you ever told anybody you love them and you don't love them? That's a lie. Have you ever said you're good? That's a lie. The Bible says there's none that do it good. You ever say, I'm okay? No, you're not. That's a lie. Because without Jesus, you're on the road to hell. Matter of fact, John chapter 3 says you're condemned already. When you have stolen something, when you have told a white lie, have you ever told somebody there's a Santa Claus? That's a lie. Easter Bunny? That's a lie. That's a lie. You bear false witness. Santa Claus is a false witness. There's no Santa Claus, but there's a Jesus. I know Santa Claus is not. He, uh, you gotta kick an idol every once in a while to get people really awoke. How were you with your parents? The Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. How were you? Were you that 100% darling of a perfect child? <laughs> yeah, right. You never had a bad thought of, of your parents? You never disobeyed your parents like you disobeyed God? You never thought after they whipped your butt for doing something wrong, oh, 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 I wish they died, I wish I had somebody else. That's not honoring your parents. You're a sinner. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. You know, Adam did not commit adultery. Adam didn't kill any. Well, he did, kind of. Roundabout way. Adam took what God said and did not do it. And we all became sinners and we're all going to die because Adam sinned. God told Adam not to and he did. God tells you to believe on Jesus Christ and you won't. It's the same sin reversed. It's still disobeying God, you're a sinner. At this moment right now, if Christ is not your Savior, you're a sinner. You disobey God. You're in the same boat as Adam. And I'll tell you what excuse, I, I will tell you what blame you will have. I got religion. God don't take religion. I give to charity. God doesn't take charity. He gave charity. Jesus Christ. I was washed in the water. God don't take baptism. I'm an evolutionist. God's the creator. There is no God. The fool has said in his heart that there's no God. It's that simple. God, our creator, man, the sinner, and God reached out to our needs. And our needs is for a Savior. And that Savior is in Jesus.
You know, there are some diseases that you may get or may not get, but there are diseases out there that you need medical attention. You can't do nothing. There's a medical condition called sin. You can't do nothing. You need God. Help. You need God's attention. You need to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent. That will get God's attention. When you call upon God, Jesus Christ, suffering, dying for your sins upon Calvary's cross, that will get God's attention. Going to church does not get God's attention. Going into the baptism waters does not get God's attention. Being good does not get God's attention. The merit and finished work of Jesus, suffering and dying according to the scripture, and being buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, that got God's attention. And you know the attention of someone coming to Jesus Christ being saved? The, the Gospel of Luke says in chapter 15, even the angels in heaven rejoice when a sinner comes back. When a sinner repents, the angels in heaven rejoice. When you get saved, when you trust in the Lamb of God, all heaven breaks out with cheerfulness. Heaven rings when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Bells ring in churches because that does not ring in heaven. When a bell rings at church, all of a sudden, dumbbells, dumbbells, dumbbells. When, a, when the angels ring in heaven because of the sinner has come home, holy, 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 art thou, God. Go to church after you're saved. Learn how to be saved. Learn how to grow. Learn how to be a Christian after you're saved. But come to Jesus for salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. You can't even get a gallon of milk to not perish. You know your soul is perishable when it's not under the blood of Jesus? And when things have perished, you throw it out and it goes to the incinerator. God's incinerator is hell. It's where he'll throw you. But you don't get consumed. You just forever burn in the flame. And forever burn. And forever burn. As long as the word of God abounds, you'll burn without Christ. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. Heaven and earth, religion, science, education, works, good things, charity, what I can do, being good, shall pass away. But my words, Jesus Christ, shall never pass away. You will go to heaven through Jesus, or you will go to hell without Jesus, and you'll be in either place as long as God lives, and God lives eternally. The relief from hell's flame is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved.
It all goes back to the garden. And I can tell you what that fruit was that Adam ate. It's the fruit of rebellion against the word of God. How's that? You know, think about all the fruit that Adam could have. Apples, pears, peaches, plums. I mean, you name it. I mean, look at the wonderful fruit we have here at the farmer's market. And Adam had all that. And then some. He had no worms in his fruit. <laughs> you know, his fruit never died. It was an unsin cursed world. It was a world without curse. There were roses with no thorns. All the fruit did not have any dent in it, no blackness, no rot. And yet Adam chose the fruit of disobeying God. And Eve said, oh, that fruit looks so good. The lust of the eyes. Oh, it make one make so wise the pride of life. I'm so hungry for that fruit. The lust of the flesh. Adam sinned by disobeying God. God slain a lamb to cover Adam and Eve. You have disobeyed the God when you have rejected what God said. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus Christ was slain. His blood has been shed that you might have eternal life. You know, Adam and Eve had two boys. They had Cain and Abel. Cain brought his fruit. God said, nope, not taking it. And, God, and Cain was mad. Abel brought blood. And God says, I'll take that. You know what Cain's fruit was? was religion. Look what I did. Look what I planted. Look how I took care of it. Look at the weeds I picked. Look at the soil I did, took care of. Look at the watering I did. Look at everything I've done. God said, nope, not taking it. And you can bring to God say, God, look what I've done. God, look how wonderful I am. God, look what I did. Look where I've done. Look how I am. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. And God would say, nope. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you, and that'll be out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. God, I bring nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You can get a well done by God through Jesus, or you can get depart from me, a nothing good and nothing that satisfies God. It's your choice. It's up to you. It's not up to God. God said, Here, here's what you to do. I send a loud mouth preacher to tell you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That guy is speaking my word. You're not rejecting him. You're rejecting me. And if you continue to reject Jesus, the penalty is hell. And if you receive the Jesus that we preach of the Bible, we will be in glory one day singing nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus. We sing nothing of religion.
We praise no getting wet, but we praise getting washed through the blood. It's the same message that's been preached since the apostles left Jerusalem in Acts chapter 1, 2, and 3. It's the same message that Christians have been killed for. It is out of the same Bible that has been burned and chained. The message we preach of Christ has been the martyr's blood over the years. It is the message that religion hates. It's the Bible and the Jesus that your public school hates. Yeah, they're in my hand. It is not the message of the world. And Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. Are you part of the world? Are you a rejecter of Jesus? Then he says, you hate him. You hate Jesus. Nothing but the blood. The only miracle that will save you is the blood of Jesus Christ. The only tongue you can speak is your native tongue of Jesus, save my soul. I repent of my sin. Without Jesus, you are a child of the devil. With Jesus, God will adopt you and become a child of God through Jesus. Only through Jesus. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. And I sing that personally. Joy bells, joy bells, instead of being a dumbbell for religion. I was in religion once. There is a name I love to hear. There is a story I love to tell about Jesus. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Not are you washed in the river, washed in the oven, ocean of it. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You can have that amazing grace. If you're to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Nothing else can save you. Only Jesus saves and only Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. In case you didn't get it, only Jesus saves. Religion is man made, Jesus Christ is God approved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. When we get to heaven, it'll be all about Jesus, not us. When I get to heaven, it ain't gonna be, look at all the times I was at the farmer's market. No, all the times I preached Jesus at the farmer's market. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus was praised, lifted up. That's the sound that rings in a God's ear. Jesus. 
Romans chapter 10 says God enjoys the feet of them that carry the gospel of good tidings. Romans chapter 10 also says with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All I'm doing is confessing from my mouth that Jesus is able to save you. Save me. Adam sinned by not doing what God told him to do. Don't eat of that fruit. Adam did. He sinned. He disobeyed God. Today, 2019, we tell you from the Bible, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You won't. You're committing the same sin as Adam, just in reverse. God's telling you to do something, and you won't. Rebellion. That is a sin. Rebellion against God. And if you have not received Jesus Christ alone as your Savior, as the Lamb of God, nothing else. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself, least any man boast. You have disobeyed the Bible, the Word of God. You are yet in your sin, and whatever you're trusting, that's not Jesus. In every minute, in every moment, in every hour, in every day, in every week, in every month, in every hour you trust in that thing that's not Jesus, you become more and more vile and wicked. And you can be washed. You can be clean. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. He made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God be on us in him. No Jesus, no life. No hope. You are hopeless without Jesus. The Bible says the blessed hope is Jesus Christ. The glorious hope is Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.